Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. How are y'all doing tonight? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the fantastic smooth jazz of LA Noir. Thanks, thanks. I figured you would like this one. Get a chance to uh, clean up some of the some of the games I didn't get back to uh, to doing uh, videos for. So we're gonna pick this up right where we left off in the videos. So if you haven't seen any of the videos, you're gonna, you're gonna be a little bit lost. Just uh, go back and check those out. Well, let's check the place out. Come on. Apartment two. Uh, okay. So I, I do believe I finished this one. Um, in the previous video, but uh, apparently the save file didn't go through. So we're just gonna wrap this up really quickly, and then we'll get right into a new case. Where's apartment two? One, thirty. Oh, there he is. Help you, gentlemen. LAPD detectives, Mr. Black. You're under arrest. Look, I'm really sorry about this. I never tried to hurt anyone. I just needed to get away from LA. I won't put up a struggle. Just let me get my things. Phelps, go after him. I'll try and head him off in the car. Remember, the gun is the last resort. There's no point running, Adrian. Ooh. Mr. So, Black, get back here right now. So this is the guy that faked his own death to try to get away from his wife? It's over, Adrian. Why not just come clean with her, Black? Why the melodrama? I thought it would be easier. No, it just got a whole lot harder. Adrian Black, you're under arrest for conspiracy and fraud. We'll see what the DA has to say about wasting police resources on a wild goose chase like this. You're gonna lose your wife? 
lose your job, and probably end up in the big house. I hope she was worth it, Adrian. That turned out to be quite some case, huh? Adrian, what an idiot. You got an arrest and a clearance in your first case, and in fine style, too. Well done, detective. Efficient investigation technique, good public presence. You keep that up and you learn from Bukowski here, you could go a long way in this department. Uh, nothing's like some 1950s, I think this is? Melodrama. Okay, we're gonna keep this short. I'm already late for the DA. First up, Phelps, Bukowski. We got a report of a brand new Packard abandoned in an empty lot off 2nd Street between Olive and Grant. DR is one Oswald Jacobs says the vehicle was dumped in his backyard. There's a patrolman on site. Get down there and see what you can turn up. Any questions? Good, get going. Better go earn our pathetic wages. Rimsky, O'Halloran. Intelligence has information on a stolen car racket. An abandoned vehicle. You catch all the good ones, huh, Phelps? Sounds like there's more to it than that. Okay, yeah, 40. Nobody dumps a shiny new Packard unless they borrowed it without asking. You don't say. You were on fire today, Einstein. Very funny. <laughs> Come on, my intense protege. Let's go save the world. I want to make homicide. You know you need. You hear about Adrian? Brought in Seattle, threw him out. Wife says she's gonna take him back. Women generally show more compassion. What are you talking about? Adrian dumped on her. He was humping the secretary. Margaret should show some pride. Pride comes before a fall, Bukowski. Talking from experience. Officer Houlihan. Cars down the alleyway, detectives. We got a call about an abandoned vehicle? Yes, sir. The car has flags. Might be some kind of diplomatic vehicle. Has anyone touched this vehicle since you arrived? No. And that Jacobs bird over there was on station before I got here. We'll talk with him in a moment. Give us some time to look the place over. Sure, take your time. He's a sore-headed old son of a bitch anyway. Alrighty, let's uh, do some investigation, shall we? We'll have to use the registration to trace the owner. It's owned by the Argentinian Embassy. Out of paper and ink. Top it up, will you? Empty. <laughs> yeah, that's old school. Stealing the wheels is for amateurs. Car ring would have stripped it in a warehouse. Combination wrench. 
Must have used it to remove the wheel lugs. Taking the flag as a souvenir can't have any street value. All right. And then the way that kind of L.A. Noir works is when the music stops playing, just kind of like how you heard just now, that means you found all the clues. There's nothing else left to find. Oswald Jacobs. That's right. What exactly happened here, Mr. Jacobs? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. Always asking for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyways, last night, I see this brand Sounds like spanking the fat man. Packard up on bricks. I feel like that's going to be the fat man pretty soon. Uh, get off of my lawn! Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. E, um, yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, racial undertones. Can you tell us what they were doing? using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to them, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off, tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You speak Spanish, sir? No, I do not. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car? After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. Oh my God, look at that face. You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Ain't a law against that. So what if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. Uh, Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. I didn't catch the license number. I haven't gotten any error messages saying that uh, anything's going on, so that might just be your internet connection. I'm not 100% sure. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red pink job stands out a mile. What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. Right. So what did you take, Jacobs? Do you want my partner to pat you down? I found a notebook in the glove compartment. I was going to show you. It's on the chair on my porch. Thank you for your help, Mr. Jacobs. You can speak to Officer Thibault about signing a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way, maybe you could come back and do something about those kids. Well, how about we bring you an umpire's mask? <laughs> okay, so we have the owner of the vehicle, a degenerate. I'll run John Madsen by R and I. Mm -hmm. Contact details on a William Dewey. This looks like business rather than pleasure. 
Gabriel, angelic features but frisky. Timothy Stabel, slim lips. Jean Ballou, dark good looks. Kenneth Vaughn, particularly shy. Jeremy Odell, likes gifts. Very innocent, very pale. What kind of descriptions are these? I think we've wrung this place dry. Let's find a game well. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? Could you run the name Dewey Brothers? Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. Brothers Packard Dealership, 629 Figueroa Street. Got it. Can you put me through to Michigan 2458, please? Connecting you now. Hello, can I help you? LAPD, ma'am. Can I speak to John Madsen, please? He's at school, officer. Uh, what's this about? Is he in trouble? How old is your boy, ma'am? Just turned 16. Wrong person, Mrs. Matson. Sorry to disturb you. Are there any messages for me? There's just one message for you, Detective. A four-door Packard diplomatic license number, Paul Robert 706, was reported missing this morning by Juan Francisco Valdez. Could you have him brought in? He's already here at Central, Detective. He's demanding an audience, as he calls it. Thanks. Can you get a message to Captain Leary? Tell him we'll be in as soon as we can. Thank you. Can you cordon off this lot until we have the vehicle impounded? Yes, sir, Detective. We'll follow up on the owner. Get a statement from Jacobs, and I'll read your report back at the station. All righty. So, go ahead and get back in the car here. We can visit the Packard dealership or head back to Central and interview this Valdez character. Your call. I'm going to head over to the dealership. This has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we have caught this year. One more, and I'm going to go crazy. Not your favorite cases? Are you kidding me? This is barely even police work. Of all the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered to keep what they steal. I agree. It it does sound a little pervy to me too. Shots fired off street top. Chateau and Valencia. Chateau and Valencia. Shots fired off street top. Unit to handle code three identified. Look like we got uh, some little action here. I'm gonna flip the sirens and go for it. over to that shots fired call.
Car 11K, we'll handle the help call. Go ahead, KGPL. 11K, shots fired. Officer needs help. Shot I see you motherfuckers. Come on up here and get us. What is all this? Traffic stop from hell. Prowling unit pulls these guys over. Finds that trunk full of hardware like you wouldn't believe. They lose. Bullets start flying. And they snatch up the guns from one of the cops. Head to high ground and make their stand. And the officer? Up there. Still alive, we think. Who knows for how long. We'll keep him busy if you can find a way up, sir. If we can find our way up there, throw out the guns. Uh, is there a way up? Weapons on the ground now. K. I've been involved in a shooting. It's code four here, but suspects are down, and I need an ambulance at Chateau and Valencia. Also notify detective headquarters. I'll need the coroner. My partner and I are okay. 11K, Roger on the ambulance and coroner. Detective headquarters will be notified. All units, 11K reports code four on the shooting at Chateau and Valencia. Code four. Well, pedal to the metal as much as you can in like a old packer or whatever this is. I don't know what this music was. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Let me guess. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating the theft of a Packard belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, Detective. But I know how we can find out. Follow me. And he was landed on thick as soon as we pulled up. We keep all our tools in here. Mind if we look around? Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car? Huh? Maybe a used car. I have some nice used cars for guys in your wage bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? 
go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. <laughs> Okay. One left. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three quarter. That's not anything. It doesn't appear to be connected. Well, wasn't it missing a license plate? Hmm. Well, maybe that's not it. Found everything that's worth noticing. What a random tool. No good. We need diplomatic plates. Let's go talk to the uh, owner. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Packards are great cars, but this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know about this? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. But his name was in the book, so he's lying. And I know a shyster when I see one. You and Valdez are in this together. Me and Valdez? I hardly know him. Valdez wouldn't wipe his shoes with me. Yeah, we know he knows him because his name is in the book. We found your contact details in Valdez's notebook. He had to be calling you for something, do we? Okay. So I met Valdez in a bar. We cut a deal. He bought the car through the embassy. I cut him some change on the side. It happens all the time. Mm. Back Where can deals. we find Delgado? I don't know. It sure as hell isn't here. Yeah, Address, do we? Or my partner shoves her head in a car door. Okay, all right. Apartment 3103 Hill Street. And tell him from me, if he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spin They do of lie bad in this game. Comes with the location. It's even bastards to steal anything the minute your back is turned. What are you hiding, Dewey? Spill it. You don't want the LAPD getting too interested in this place. So I hire a few illegals. It's cheaper than hiring returning GIs. And they have less attitude. Downside is, they're a little light-fingered. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dewey. No problem. God damn that kid. I'm just an honest car salesman. Oh, Seems please. like you just don't know who you can trust these days. Going to movies, Dewey. You're missing your calling. <laughs> Time to visit Gabriel Delgado. See how good his excuse is. Now 
Uh, I don't think we're gonna go and pick up the suspect yet. We got that guy still waiting for us back at the embassy. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Uh, so where are we going? We're just gonna have a partner drive back to the uh, police station. You read this story in the Examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. Third dimension would be Z. So things would be popping out of the screen. That's ridiculous. Scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. People scoffed at the idea of talkies and color, and look what we have now. Talkies and colors? What? Can you imagine, like, how they would see the virtual reality of today? Probably have a heart attack. Do we have a Juan Francisco Valdez in for questioning? Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview, too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch anything. Can you beat that? <laughs> Sounds like we don't want to keep this guy waiting. It's this way. Just need a cop to be About time. Are you the senior officer I requested? I'm Detective Phelps, and this is Detective Bukowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate, and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend, let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Valdez, Counsel General, I insist on my full title. All right, let's go ahead Where and get the question Where did you purchase power? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place, the Dewey Brothers by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires. Yeah, we all know he talked to what, the guy in the bar. Well, Liz, a snob like you doesn't drive an American car. I want answers or I'll smack you around the teeth. William Dewey offered me a substantial bribe to make a purchase at his establishment. It is not unusual to make this kind of transaction in the civil service. Well, tell that to the Argentine taxpayers. It's after the consul. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the council garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flawed. Unfortunately, we don't do that here, your worship. Nah, he's lying. You have a pretty good idea who stole the car, don't you, Consul General? Are you gonna tell me, or do I shake it out of you? There's no call for violence. I suspect disgruntled boy from the car dealership. You have a name for this kid? Gabriel. Like the Archangel. I have no surname. Mm-hmm. So tell us about this kid, Gabriel. You had a run-in with him? Mechanic. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. We do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. Now, he's lying. Gabriel's name was in the book. Along you with fucked those... them boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? This will cause an international incident. Danny, Ben, Miguel, Tristan, and Teddy. Full lips. Ring any bells? I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Gabriel, spill it. A beautiful but impertinent boy. I mentioned rendezvous and the young man went quite insane. I thought he was going to kill me. I was prepared to pay. 
We'll be in touch, Consul General. Let's nail this kid Delgado and wrap this thing up. Guy gave his wife a tap. I said all fair and love and war. Yeah. Who called? Who said pervert? Finished Got with Valdez. Right. Thank God. I'll get rid of him in a couple of hours. <laughs> This just in. Okay, let's see what Gabriel has to say for himself. Right. I just hope our Archangel hasn't already flown. What the hell is this guy doing? Let's see if uh, Gabriel's a home. Which floor am I going to? That's the question. Hey, keep it down, would you? My little girl just got to sleep. Oh, did I miss something? Yipes, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, but that's the right house. Yeah. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Gabriel Delgado here, Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Ms. Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay with the broad. Uh, yikes. So how far along are you? Nearly 20 weeks. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor and he's not around? You are wrong. Souvenirs are a dumb move. He will be a good father. <laughs> Already he works hard to provide for us. Unless you help us here, Anna, your little one won't be seeing Papa for a very long time. Well, I mean, we already found the uh, the flag. So at least we know we're in the right place. Let's see what else we can find around here. Oops. Sorry. Incidental. Yeah, I ain't nothing. Yeah. Serving breakfast for two, Anna? You should have cleared up. Yeah. So he's around. to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from the scene. <laughs> Certainly Gabriel's pride and joy. Yeah. Got ourselves a hot rodder. Uh, 
I think we just gotta check the balcony now. I think that's the last bit that's left. Do we have a garage back here? So let's see. Oh. Well, looks like Valdez gets his wheel back. Just some tools. That's not what we want. What do we got here? Diplomatic license plates. Alright. Alright. Look like we found all the clues that we need. Let's go back and talk to the girl. You're in serious trouble, Miss Rodriguez. But Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Alrighty. Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. He has his honor, no? His yeah, honor? Sure. Anna? He said do his friend tried to make a woman out of him. He no longer respects this man, do we? He took the car to show this maricon that he is a man. Maricon? Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. Come on now. Come on. You keep lying to me, and I'll send you and your baby to jail. He lives here. But he hasn't come home. I swear it. <sighs> come on, lady. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. Oh, my. He was here last night. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. We found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts, and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. I know nothing of these car parts. Then tell us where he is. If your baby is born in prison, Anna, the corrections officers will take it from you. You will see your son or daughter through a metal grate for half an hour a week. The start line is on First and Santa Fe. There is a spillway under the bridge that leads to the river. Many policia have wrecked trying to follow him. We will put in a good word for you, Anna. As far as we're concerned, this sits with Gabriel. Start line? That sounds like a street race to me gotten out of hand this last year. No wonder Delgado has such an eye for fine things. We know where the kid is. Let's go stop these clowns and get them off the streets. Yeah, let's go then. Get the car. I'm going to get some street racing done. That's what I'm talking about. What kind of man leaves his pregnant girlfriend at home while he goes off to play cars? Pregnant girlfriends aren't always a barrel of laughs. Everyone needs to let off a little steam. Some guys wouldn't come back home at all. Are you talking from experience? Quick as we shut one of these races down, another one springs up somewhere else. Kids used to steal cars to sell them. Now they just want to wrap them around a lamppost. 
The next 16-year-old I have to peel off the sidewalk, you're calling the mother. I've had enough of those to last me a lifetime. Ooh. Mm. I think we'll let that one go. We got a shoot race to stop. Oh, come on. Try to get there in one piece. All units in the vicinity, citizen reports at 415 at the corner of Banning and Santa Fe. Suspect vehicles engaged in illegal street racing. Units to handle code 3 identified. <laughs> There's the red Ford. That's Delgado right there. Quick! They're getting away! Phelps, 1247. Requesting assistance at First and Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street race. Stay on Delgado. He's getting away. I'm on him. I'm on him. You're gonna lose him. I'm not gonna lose him. Calm down. I'm gonna find you! Delgado is our boy. Forget the others. Oh no! Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. Step on it, Phelps. Take him out. You're gonna die, Garacho. Whoa, ho, ho! Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Damn it, Cole, hold it steady. Gabriel Delgado, you're under arrest for Grand Theft Auto. Fuck you, puto. You should speak to the maricón. Valdez, I showed him. Now who's a man? I should have burned his fucking car. You got a foreign dignitary out it as a fruit and a kitty raper, a car dealer we're gonna let slide for the kickbacks, and a street punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That Detective Phelps is not a bad haul. You keep your chin low and your hands high, and you keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing, and we need more of it in this department. I think we were on our way to five starring that at one point, and then is until I started driving, you know, driving into stuff. That's quite a bit of vehicle damage. Oh, I still five started. Hey. All right. Let's see what we got up next. Some traffic. You have any plans for weekend liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before liberty. Good job, Kelso.
Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Full inspection. It had better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. Kelso, this carbine. The bore is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelso? Do what you need to do, Sergeant. You know the bore is immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. Two-day field drill. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. Well then. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. It probably is a court martial. I swear, this town is going straight to hell. Wait for our partner to catch up with us. Hopefully, we can get stuck on the world geometry. Looks like the DA is going to press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes conviction. I'll convince him to let it go. <laughs> How you do that? I'll give him something better. We got ourselves the bodies, guys. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male named Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, named Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Mm. Phelps, you should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand a chance. What you got, Doc? on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. <laughs> oh... Old school detective work. No gloves. Just roll the body over. <laughs> All right. Well, another space. Uh, nothing there. Uh, not a face. Uh, let's 
see here, dear Mr. Patterson. It's a great pleasure that we acknowledge your receipt of your application. 14F pre-bills were going to raise the weekly premium of your life insurance policy from 370 per week to 4 590 per week. This raise became effective July 1st. Okay. The standard veteran care package. Title the lump sum of 10000 in event of your untimely death or permanent incapacitation. This new plan secures your benefits, son of 16000 Oh, what the fuck? Addison has life insurance. Um, I'm assuming he didn't do that. Yeah, no CSI, just. What's that? Blood? Gross. Clean it up. <laughs> right. We can notify next of kin. Lester Pattison. Alright. For the bloody money. The monogrammed wallet, though. It's nice. Uh, make sure we don't miss anything here. What have you got on the victim? Mm -hmm. From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. <laughs> Got hit with the BMW flying spur. Body traveled a good 20 feet. Yeah, that car was going fast. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Yeah. He got some air time when he got hit. So the driver managed to break before the impact. Let's slow down anyway. She's all yours, detective. But the music's still playing, so. There's more left to find. Hmm. Maybe. What do we have here? Hello, hello. Knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. He, he did have a chest wound. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put out, you know, the fact that he may have been uh That he may have been hit. Careful where you step, it helps. <laughs> I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. <laughs> Knocked his hat clean off. Still playing music like we have something to find though. I wonder where. Maybe there's something else in the alley.
take a smarter man than me to connect that. Exactly what I'm missing. Never the same, are they? I don't know. Let's see. About that far. About that far. I think we might have found everything there. Right, let's talk to the lady. We'll see what she has to say. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Let's uh, give her a report. Can you tell us what happened? Well... I uh, came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Okay, she overheard an argument. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Oop. Very specific. She was very confident in an answer, too. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Okay. Let's see what she has to say about the argument. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Uh, she don't sound too sure about that. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. <laughs> People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Oh, oh okay. The newspaper that might have been what was making the music team go off because this counts as evidence too for some reason. Courtney, come in, have a seat. Thanks. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can unfortunately be very long term. So many of the patients here are addicts, doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned in sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. 
what may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. All right, sure. Why not? I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. Hello? What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. You're not being truthful with me, sir, are you? So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Oh, well, that is his name. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. Mm -hmm. A witness overheard an argument. <laughs> Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? No, nah, he's not telling me how to thing. Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo? The owner? Okay. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Who knows? I just served the drinks. What lies he tells? Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm gonna need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Is that what we call it? The love tap. Different times, I guess. Different times. This town is going straight to hell. Let's try the game well. He's gone. It's got to be something big, right? Cole Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. I need to run a partial license plate, 3 Charles 8. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks for your help. Looks like we caught a break on this one. I knew it wasn't safe around here anymore. Forties, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand it's the forties, but still. Let's go get this guy. It's a lucky break getting a partial ID. These cases are usually dead in the water after 24 hours if no one comes forward. Why don't they just stop? You heard about fight or flight during the war? Sure. Never back your enemy into a corner. That kind of stuff. Right. Well, in a hit and run, the perp is already in flight. 
it's easier to keep going. It takes a degree of moral courage to stop and accept responsibility. You're not as dumb as you make yourself out to be, are you, Stefan? I didn't know I was making myself out to be. Okay. Like he's going somewhere. That's the son of a bitch right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You're packing your bags and making a run for it. You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. A lot of it. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. I love how his answer to everything is lay into his wheel arches. No games, Phelps. Take this guy out. No wonder he killed someone, driving like this. Don't let that asshole get away! Alright, I give up! That's it! Cuff him and we're done! Hands behind your head! How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is gonna love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. You should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. Okay. You become all hard at the prospect of paperwork, don't you? Uh, hang on. Dan got a little glitchy. I didn't put the marker for going to notify this lady. Or not. Okay. Okay. I was going to drive, but I'll, I'll have him drive because it's... You it's, can drive. It doesn't want to put the marker for <laughs> going to our house. Going? Do you believe him? I believe he didn't mow down the victim on purpose. The rest of it stinks. His boo-hoo story about being a surveyor and not wanting to lose his license. Well, we'll see how he enjoys surveying the same tiny room for the next 10 years of his life. You make a mistake, you face the consequences. You don't run off and hide like some little girl hoping it'll all go away. People make bad decisions in the heat of the moment. Well, I'd like to see him try that one on the job. If he had time to clock who was at the scene, he had time to make a choice.
Well, I mean, he got a point. He did hit him and run. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here. And I beg I... your pardon? You're going to have to run that one bias again, sister. <laughs> it's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. <laughs> How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. I think she's lying there. You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk. You were always arguing. So what? Admit it. You were baiting him. Pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. Mm -hmm. All right. The bartender said that you Fair and Leroy enough. were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. Nah, that's not. Being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? Oh, oh, little man. You increased the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights. Crap games, peanut gull, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're she having. She sure does. Phone icon. Is there a phone around here? Is this? Hey, okay, use telephone. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you 
through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks. All right. Looks like we gotta go through the old sawbones. I'm starting to think that the husband's accident wasn't such an accident. My this officer needs help. 333 South Main Street. 333 South Main Street. Officer needs help. 211 and shots fired. Unit to handle code 3. Identify. <laughs> we put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. He'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Go pick them up. Stop, stop, everybody stop. I hope that didn't count. I'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how he had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim. All that planning, 
how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up. Bates is covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with think it. I'm gonna fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him for God's sake. Whoop! It's too late, Sabo. Oh shit. Stop or I will shoot. Stop running. I'm a cop. I'm out of shape. Come on, Flatfoot. Let's negotiate. Put the weapon down now. Put your weapons down and your hands in the air. Help me! You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. I mean, we have to go down. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Some sharp elbows. There you go. Another visit to Ray's and you would have seen that Leroy was prepared, prepared to avoid jail. Eh. But I think we did alright. So at the end of the cases, they usually give these little case notes. Uh, that tells you about things you could have did a little bit differently to, 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 you know. To get things to turn out better or worse or whatever. But... Hey, I'll take five stars. Let's see. Uh, I think we probably got... Yeah, I think we got time for one more. Kowski. B cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. <laughs> We're on it, Captain. I swear the more vent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe you. <laughs> I got the jitters again. You got a stakeout down on second later tonight. Right, let's go. How does he keep coming out that door? Already. They're calling her the Dahlia now. Wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? Well, Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. 
Brown and Green are sweating this Manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Poor thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having their death strewn all over the front pages. Oh. Are they talking about the Black Dahlia? enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. This is the big one. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. All right, all right. Maybe that was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get Give it up, on. LAPD. I'll call it in. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. Oh, okay. All right, looks like we got ourselves something interesting here. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? From the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top-notch. This will need to be traced. Oh. Okay. Registration fees is $1.90. Holy crap. If only. You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. Don't believe you. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. <laughs> so wacky backy. Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You gotta be kidding me! I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, Detective. Do you know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out <laughs> Harrison's story. What? I think he's telling the truth. Some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. <laughs> the paperwork all looked above board, and he seemed like a clean-cut kid. Huh. Well, I get it now. 
You see some kid who's basically you five years ago and assume he's got to be innocent. I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. <laughs> hey, if he'd been black or Hispanic, you'd be singing a different tune. You spout all this communist crap about treating everybody the same, but it only works one way. I'm not sure that's communism, Stefan. Oh, God, please. Not another history lesson from the man who single-handedly won the war. Are you finished? Yes. I feel much better now. We'll shake down the card dealer and take it from there. <laughs> Unless his daddy plays golf with yours, of course. In which case, we'll give him a firm gentleman's handshake and be on our way. See? I knew you weren't finished. <laughs> I like Stefan. Good, good guy, that guy. Careful! Oops. That was my that was my fault that time. Oh my god, not six bottles. Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Mm hmm. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Coe. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. What? That's a joke, too, son. <laughs> Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene Archer. 146 North Fremont Avenue. <laughs> okay, so it's reassigned to the dealer. Mm -hmm. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. Yeah. All right. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas, shoot. All right, so let's get the details of the Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Okay. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Okay. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. Okay. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed. In a hurry to go somewhere, but no place to go. You get to know the time. Okay. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. Yeah. All right. Tell them the truth. It says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. 
Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. Okay. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Combs? Close of play on Friday. Come on. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. Mm-hmm. This was all above board. Yes. Of course it was. Nah. You just said it wasn't, though. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bear bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. <laughs> you have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. <laughs> Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. I don't... They, they do get real actors to do the face captures for this. I don't know who that is, though. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, Detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. Any messages? A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thanks, ma'am. All right. Head back to the station. Let's check the Address posted on that thing. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car salesmen. Doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line just to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. We should go to the station, see what this Belasco guy has to say. Oh, wrong button. Alright, let's, uh... Bruh. Yeah, let's go to the police station. I promise you the next time that we stream this, I'm going to turn this music off. What is this? Any Century Unit of 415, possible metal case. At 7th and Flower, Unit of Ammo Code 3, identify. Uh. Oh, ho, oh, got some air. Velasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks.
I got this gadget whiz putting recording devices into the Crummy place. Crummy bastard. Mode. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. Yeah, Belasco. The paper is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Huh. Same address, though. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm gonna ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at ten years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I, I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. The paperwork they provide is normally a breeze. Does the name Jean Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. Nah, he's lying. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. Yeah, because the address was the same, wasn't it? So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? I love that bracket. What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. No, nah, you know. Give me something, Belasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay. I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the East Downtown. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up, now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid. We'll see what we can do. All right, James. We're gonna check if this information is worth anything. And if it is? I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word. And so will the DA. I got this. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California. The Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightball. Gordon Lightball. Here. I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office... 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! She won't hang around. Oh, oh shit. Oh, she actually means that shit. Oh. Run. Run. <laughs> I mean, this is L.A., so, you know, it's a thing. Broad has socks in it, Brazil. The five to war for this? Of course.
life. LAPD. We'll take it from here. God damn it. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? That could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. <laughs> the car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. Not Gene, yet. you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, a girl needs things. I don't see you looking out for me. Mm -hmm. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? You're lying. James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Well, I think you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I don't know him. Mm-hmm. Do you not? You aren't sharp enough to lie to me, Gene. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. The pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. <laughs> Tell me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I, I can't remember. Let me go, will you? Please. What have I got to do? Trying my patience here, Gene. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. You'll have nowhere to run. All right already. I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now you've got what you want. Can I go? Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? He takes a little getting used to, but yeah, he generally means what he says. You know the way. You can drive. No, no, All right. No. Where to? Let's go to the warehouse. Yeah, the way. Friendly girl. Used to getting her own way. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. <laughs> and what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I know that. But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait, <laughs> scrap that second half of the question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all. Now we're getting somewhere. Yep, I'm with you on the blondes. Brunettes are fine, too. And there's nothing wrong with a good redhead. <laughs> but I draw the line at gray. You know what? I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free market. A man <laughs> with high standards. The standards are only as high as the last glass of whiskey. <laughs> All units, I'll show you to help. Major 415, 1624 West 3rd Street, 1624 West 3rd Street. Any unit to handle code 3, identify. Now look what you've done! Yeah, it's fine. Quiet. Okay. 
Alrighty. Like we're coming up on the car warehouse here. were gung-ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. Cole Phelps, LAPD. All of you are coming downtown with me. Think so, huh? Look sharp at the cops. Throw out the guns. <laughs> Weapons on the ground. Now. Oh, oh there's a lot of them. Shot my head off. Okay, why can't I shoot? You're pretty brave, dead man. Hey, go! Let's clear the top floor. I don't want to get drilled in the back on the way out. Stay down! Ah! Oh, these guys had a shotgun. All right. All right, all right. Don't shoot. Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. Key printing company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. All right. Betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I had to work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the ballot of bulge. I can't give you anything. All right. How about the we know about market right there. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem. 
There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis. He's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes me. Mm-hmm. Lightfall. The guy with no luck at the track. I know, Tell right? Tell me about him. I don't have any control over that. It's one of the guys lying over there. You're right. There's no luck. That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow? Hey, would I lie to you, detective? I'm not exactly in a good position here now, am I? Gordon Lightball owns Marquee Printing, a government print shop. He's losing big at the track. He has these big government contracts. He's in hock over 20 grand. If the feds find out, the contracts will be all over. Lightball plays ball. All right, Bigelow. The heat is off you. Play your cards right, and you'll be able to count your time in Quentin on one hand. <laughs> Go get the guy then. This is big. It's gotta be something. I I had no control over him dropping the gun, by the by. He did that automatically. take some cleaning up that's for sure I wish it hadn't gone that way well they shouldn't bring guns to work with them we didn't have a lot of choice you have to admire the barefaced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and pleads innocence the next yeah especially when he's surrounded by evidence you know, guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit they get sloppy Bigelow like ball all of them if they hadn't who knows how long they could have kept this racket going complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings him down. Get out of the way, folks. Out of the way. Those cross ply tires for you. They ain't got the best for it. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't do that. You're under arrest. I'm sorry. Just what the hell are you talking about? We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightball. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Save it, Lightball. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. Mm-hmm. Heard you in big. Heard you in big. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree. I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need... You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. 
The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? I want to finish reading this. All right. Oh, no. Uh, we was gonna get one four star out of it somewhere. It was, might have been all the vehicle damage. It was probably all the vehicle damage. But I think that'd be this. This is a good spot to stop. I do believe. So, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I think this is going to be the new uh, streaming series going forward for mm, probably take us a couple weeks to get through it. If uh, everybody's okay with that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I will see everyone next time. Next Thursday. Same bat channel. Same bat time. Have a nice evening. And, uh, take care.